Welcome to Coffee with Dwayne and Jesse. I'm Dwayne. I'm Jesse. Uh, this is our first episode. Number one. This is history in the making. This is ground zero. <laughs> you Ground zero yeah. and history in the making. You see, ground zero uh, reminds me of like um, an explosion of some sort. Like, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. like uh, maybe uh, where the bomb drops or something. That's yeah, that's zero. not good. This is yeah. not ground zero. This is not ground zero. You call it the cornerstone? Yeah. Like the cornerstone? The foundation of something. Foundation? Good things to yeah. come. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, this is a show about uh, life, family, and coffee. Coffee. Right? Um, we love our coffee. Well, I love my coffee. Um, and I say I love my coffee. It's I really have a strong like for my yeah. coffee. I'm developing a strong like for different coffee. You know, I think for a long time I was just, I was just oh. that's not... It's not coffee. I mean, it's, well, I mean, it's coffee, I mean, it but is. it's mass-produced coffee. And mass-produced, and I loaded it with sugar, so I don't even know that I was getting the coffee. It was just liquefied sugar and cream. So, right. But um, you're making a change to that now. You're drinking I your am, coffee black. Yeah, black. Nothing in it. Nothing at all. All right. It's, and what do you think about it? I really like it. I think this is, our, this is the Tanzania blend, yep. and it's light enough for – newer coffee drinkers it's not gonna like overpower um but you still get that kind of like oh this is this is good you know especially without sugar you really get to taste you know kind of the the coffee yes ness coffiness 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 we're gonna go with it that's the title of this episode <laughs> coffiness coffiness yep. yep so um when i drink coffee um it used to be that I would drink coffee. There, there's, I think, two ways to drink coffee. One is to drink it for effect. Um, mm -hmm. And that's where you have to have it to get your day rolling. Yeah. You, and there's people who cannot function without their Java, 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 you know, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. uh, but it looks like this at the beginning. Like, I need, I need my Java. Um, yeah. And so there are times, as a matter of fact, that's how I got started drinking coffee, standing mid-watch in the Navy. Uh, it'd be two o'clock in the morning and you have to go and do something to stay awake and Navy coffee would put hair on your chest. <laughs> and, uh, as my grandpa, uh, grandson would say, uh, at least one pebble, at least one, <laughs> at least one. <laughs> um, but anyway, so that's how I started drinking coffee was for effect, uh, to keep me awake. And, uh, it was something just to get me going. But as I've matured a little bit and to state the obvious, I'm a little older than he is. I think I'm about uh, a little bit twice your age. Um, I'm, I'm 27. Okay, I'm almost twice his age. <laughs> yes. Uh, but anyway, um, so I now I really enjoy drinking coffee for the sake of drinking coffee to the point I just bought a coffee business and started selling coffee last year, uh, which is how this thing came yeah. about. So uh, that is a that's one of those things that's called uh, dead air. Yeah. And dead air is bad yeah. on YouTube channels. Yeah. Yeah. So, so where do we go from here? So we fill the air. We fill the air. Okay. So, so you would when ask you were, me. You uh, in, so when you were in the Navy. Yes. You started drinking coffee. So what was the Navy coffee like? You said put a hair on your chest. Like how? Um, I don't, there was a secret blend that our mess cooks used. Um, and I think it was like tar. Um, <laughs> it was like tar and uh, like fresh squeezed, like, uh, uh, I don't want to say coffee beans is whatever stronger like than coffee beans. Like they'd ring out the coffee tree. I don't know. And, <laughs> but, and then they, they sweat in it um, and uh, all that kind of stuff. And the coffee in the Navy is actually so strong that you just say, hey, coffee, come here. And it, would, <laughs> Get up and it would pour itself, and then it'd come over and jump up into your hand. Into your hand. Yes. And then it'd fight you on the way down. It would fight you, yeah. and it'd fight you going back up. <laughs> and so, yes, that's, uh, yeah. that's how strong Navy coffee was. So I started drinking coffee in a much less uh, hostile <laughs> way. Um, so mine was when I was, I was at one point in business and finance, and um, we always were asking, you know, anytime we would have like a meeting trying to sell financial planning insurance, for some reason, we would always just ask, hey, like, let's grab coffee. Right. That was like our, our thing. And then we would do networking events over coffee. Yeah. And so when I first started, I hated coffee. Mm -hmm. Like, but that's what everyone else was doing. And so I would go and I'd order a coffee and I'd take one sip and I would like, uh, and then I would just hold it in my hand the entire rest of the time and throw it, on, right. throw it out on the way out. 
And then, uh, and then I had Tim Hortons and they're like, huh, cream and sugar. And I was like, yeah, three, <laughs> three of each. I don't know. And it was so sweet and it didn't taste like coffee at all. That's why I started drinking. So yeah, a little bit less, uh, for out of need. It was more out of, um, Oh, almost like a compliance, almost like just <laughs> everyone else was. So I might as just well. Peer pressure. Peer, peer pressure. That's positive. If it's for over coffee, that's positive peer pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm glad. I'm glad that I like coffee. So. Right. Um, so I, I don't drink it for effect now. I, I do get comfort mm. in holding, uh, holding a mug in my hand. Um, I was really disappointed. I don't do much in the way of chains. I have one particular chain. I'm not going to name them that I do like. Um, there are some that I don't, uh, I don't go to. I avoid uh, places. I'm again, I won't say their name rhymes with uh, bar stucks. And um, I don't, I don't like going into those places. That's, that's like super strong. Um, yeah. And the only time now I, I said, I don't go there. If I'm in the mood for dessert. Mm, yeah. I'll get me like a, a caramel uh, frappuccino or something like yeah, that. Double chocolate chip. But I don't call that coffee. No, I just I no, call that dessert. Yeah, it's it's slushy with a little bit of coffee and a ton of sugar and caramel and right. chocolate. Well, they put some espresso and stuff like that. But again, that's just a that's a treat. Um, whereas uh, if I really just want coffee, uh, I just yeah. brew my own, and yeah. uh, I just enjoy uh, having a pot of it throughout the day, where I can just like savor every sip of it, as opposed to. Um, you know, that sludge. That, yeah. that, that's the word I was looking for sludge. earlier in the Navy is more of sludge. Sludge coffee. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah, and I appreciated it at the time. Um, but uh, now I don't drink sludge because I don't have to. Yeah, that place that you're talking about and that, that coffee, uh -huh. this coffee concoctions, mm -hmm. uh, that'll give you diabetes if you drink it every day. Like we're in, we're like in the middle of of like the highest level of obesity and diabetes, and well, that's why you're drinking. And your that's why I'm drinking right mine. That's why I'm drinking mine black. So um, it wasn't because of that coffee. It's a mixture of eating right. garbage food and that coffee and genetics all at one time. But uh, yeah, I used to love those things, and now you know I just I can't. I mean, I'm I was diagnosed diabetic, and they basically told me I bleed maple syrup. Uh, <laughs> it was that bad. So. I am on a... Somebody tap him! <laughs> yeah, they were like, you can sell this stuff, especially in Canada. You know, we're, but, uh, <laughs> but no, so the doctor told me like, hey, you got to change the way you're eating. And so now I've been doing that. And this is like the first real cup of black coffee where I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to do the cream and the sugar. Um, and I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. I'm like, I'm no, really No, this happy. is what, what's, what, what, what did we brew? This is the Tanzania blend. That's right. And it comes from the Mbaya, Mbaya? In Mumbai okay. area of Tanzania. If you know anything about that, there's that. We don't know anything about that, really. Some small co-op farmers. A small co-op co farm, farmers. Mm -hmm. um, and the tasting profile is pear, floral, jasmine, and strawberry. I don't taste any of those, I, but it's good coffee. I don't taste those either. It, it tastes <laughs> like a light to medium. It's mm -hmm. not super bold. Um, yeah. But... I always laugh when I see those uh, tasting profiles on coffee. It reminds me of like those uh, wine connoisseurs who would be yeah. like, uh, this is uh, grown on the hills of uh, Tuscany on the sunny side of the field. It was harvested by Pierre. Um, he has a left, he, he was left-handed left -handed. and had a limp. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, I'm not that kind of a guy when it yeah. comes to the coffee. I just, again, no, I like it or I don't like it. And, um, I, I've so far I've liked, uh, the blends that, that, uh, I have started selling. I appreciate our roasters out in uh, California. And, uh, so that's, uh, actually we sell it online. If you want to check out this Tanzania blend, um, I do like my coffee.com. And funny thing about the name, people ask me, well, if you're going to start a coffee business, why did you use, I do like my coffee and not, I, I love my coffee.com. Yeah. And the short answer is, is that I say love for people. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, I, I love the Lord. Uh, I love my family. Uh, I love my wife. Um, but I do like my coffee. Yeah. <laughs> and so I don't, I think we use the word, we throw that word love yeah. around a lot. Yeah. It, it almost it becomes devoid of real meaning, you know, and, and cause we use words so flippantly like love again, 
we use words so flippantly. Flippantly, okay. Flippantly. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, love and hate especially. You know, I heard uh, someone saying how they they hate when it's nice outside and it starts to like, do you really like hate it? <laughs> Does it completely change your entire outlook on life? Like hate is a strong thing. That's right. You know, like, so I, I like that. I like, you know, um, moderating, you know, what we save those big words for that have a lot of meaning. That's right. Um, so yeah, I, I do like, I do really like, you know, my coffee. Yep, I, I do. Um, and so uh, I'll tell you what, we appreciate that you're here checking out our show. We're going to take a short break and uh, we'll be right back. All right. Welcome back uh, to coffee with Dwayne and Jesse. Um, this uh, show, it's a new, new thing for us. We've broken it up into a few different categories. That last segment, we're going to call the grind. Um, and that's where we talk about all things coffee. Yep. Right? Uh, we might uh, talk about a, a specific blend. Uh, we're going to come back sometimes. We'll talk about, you know, how do we measure out? Like, for instance, uh, Jesse, he, he's new to coffee. Yeah. So he was taking entire pou pouches of uh, our sample packs and using that for like two cups of coffee when it's enough for like a, a little more than a pot of coffee. And it was a little strong for him, a little strong. It is a little bit. That'll <laughs> put at least one hair on my chest. At least one. Yeah. Yes. And so uh, we'll have some uh, uh, episodes where we're talking about uh, measuring things out. Uh, we'll review some coffee shops. Uh, by the way, shout out to my friend Crystal uh, here in uh, Galleon, uh, just is uh, opening her own shop. Uh, she's worked there for about six years at, uh, it's been under a few names, but she's uh, taking ownership of that. And it's going to be the Three Bean Coffee yeah. House. And I'm really excited for her. And maybe once we get our act uh, yeah. figured out, we can do some recording right there from the three beans. That'd be cool. I'd love really to do cool. that. But uh, if you are in the sound of my voice and you're within driving distance of Galleon, Ohio, uh, go give Crystal a visit uh, right up uh, on our main drag there. Um, but we're going to do coffee reviews, um, coffee shop reviews. We'll do um, measurements. Now, I'll tell you this, though. There are so many coffee professional channels out there yeah. and I am not a coffee professional. I just really, I'm an enthusiast. I think yeah. you might call myself. Um, I'm never going to get into the science of, of coffee. Now I'll talk about measurements and things like that. Um, but I'm not going to get into all of the mechanics. Uh, there are some, like, I really like James Hoffman. Mm. Um, James Hoffman. You James, can't just say his name. Right. James, James Hoffman. Hoffman. Yes. Uh, he's, uh, <laughs> he gets into the science yeah. of uh, coffee. And if you're up for that, go check his channel out. Um, we have, have a good time watching. But me, I just want to uh, brew a good cup of coffee and uh, sit and enjoy it. One of my yeah. favorite things about coffee is just to sit and have dialogue with yeah. uh, friends, family. And we don't do that as a society much anymore. No. And I think with the, with the rise of, of social media and this kind of online world that we kind of create. Um, and then, of course, you know, after that, you know, we're living in the, the COVID era, I think, you the know, plague. The, the plague. And so, you know, we're not, you know, not only are we not incentivized anymore, you know, to get together and have coffee, we're actually de-incentivized, you know, to do that. So I think... Yeah, that's why, really, that's kind of why this show, why we wanted to start this show, because Dwayne and I have conversations all the time, right, over coffee, and, you know, those moments for me, um, as someone who's young and, and who needs, you know, human interaction has just been so life-giving um, in a time where it feels like, uh, you know, the world's trying to take take our lives, you know, right. take control and take our lives, so, um, so yeah, I'm really... I'm really excited about this. Well, actually, we're going to, um, so we're breaking this uh, show up into several different segments. And this segment, uh, the first one I said was the grind, all things coffee. And this one is just the start of some conversation between what he called as he's putting the agenda together, the young guy and then, you know, the old guy. Um, I'm, 
Okay, we'll go with that. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, and so we're, what are we calling this segment? Percolating. Percolating. Yeah. Because you actually had a definition of percolating. I do. You looked it up. Yes. He Googled. According to, according to the Google, percolating <laughs> is to show activity, movement, or life, and to grow or spread gradually. Okay. I, so I've been percolating I've for been the last perc- 52 years. I've been, I've been percolating. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And so I like, I really like the the definition, the end of that to grow or spread gradually. I think that's really, you know, life, right? I mean, we're always growing. We're always, you know, spreading into new areas. And, that's right. you know, for us, this is a new area. Uh, for me, coffee's, you know, a new kind of um, uh, hobby, I guess. Um, and some of the conversations that we've had, of course, off camera is, has been very, um, important for some of my growth. So I like this because this gives me a chance to talk to, you know, I'm young, married with young children. Dwayne is older, married with older children and grandkids and grandkids. And so teenage grandkids (laughs) now that's ridiculous. (laughs) Um, so Dwayne has a lot of, uh, uh, life experience that I don't. And so I think that some of those conversations will be really, uh, beneficial well, for, for me, at least if well, you, for me too. Yeah. I, I learn uh, a lot of times, uh, uh, getting different perspectives from a younger generation. I, I think one of the problems that I have, you've talked about social media mm-hmm. and I actually, uh, I refer to that as anti-social media, mm-hmm. um, because it's anything but yeah. social. Um, it, you know, there are people who actually speak in meme now like they, they you can't have an actual dialogue with some people uh it's all texting but most of the time uh, there are groups of people that the only way that they communicate is to pull a meme offline and and send it to their friends to convey whatever their thought or yeah. their emotion is or whatever and uh, that's just really not productive for relationship and yeah i'm all about relationship to me that's the thing about uh, drinking coffee with somebody it's not about the coffee although i really want to enjoy it um it is uh, really about the connection uh between people and that's something that's something that as a society we've lost that ability to connect well with one another so yeah so what do you got going on these days with you and your young family it feels like a lot. It mm-hmm. feels like a lot. So, um, you know, my wife and I work together. We do uh, window washing. And so a lot yeah, of times it's just a hobby. That's yeah. not the, that's not neither, neither one of us is our main gig. Yeah, no, no, this is, this is a, this is fun. This, this is a creative outlet. This is, this is um, something that we enjoy. So my full-time job, I guess you could almost maybe call it full-time uh, is window washing. And my wife and I do that together. Um, for a long time, we were going together in the same vehicle and doing the same jobs. And here over the past couple of weeks, uh, we've just kind of, when we do go occasionally, we'll, we'll still go together like one day a week, but now we like divide and conquer. Okay. You know? And so, so, you know, today, even she had a route that she was going to do. I had a route I was going to do. And then we come home and, you know, we have a five-year-old Maddox and a, an almost two-year-old, uh, Oliver. Oh, in two days is Oliver's birthday. Awesome. So yeah, my, my youngest will be two in two Happy days. Happy birthday, Oliver. When you're looking yes, back to you, when you're yeah. looking back in history, in the archives, you'll see this. <laughs> Shout out. Um, so, so yeah. So what I, one of the things when I was kind of looking at, you know, percolating and so one of the things that I uh, came across recently. So my wife and I are always touching base on the phone, you know, um, before I came here, I was like, Hey, how's your route going? This and that. Um, I was with a friend of mine, uh, we were just meeting for coffee, um, at a coffee shop that I don't like their coffee. I won't say who they are. I just don't like their coffee, but it's a comfortable coffee shop. Um, and we were talking and it was a long conversation. I mean, you know how conversations go with me. Uh, it was like four hours we spent at the coffee shop, just, you know, getting time to get away. Yeah. Um, and my wife called. And was just like, hey, like, I shouldn't know you were going to be gone this long. Not a big deal. Just make sure you're okay. And I said, yeah, I'm okay. I said, I'll, I'm getting ready to leave now. Love you, bye. Like, and she said, love you, bye, you know. And, and my friend says, are you ashamed to tell your wife that you love her? And I was like, no, I tell my wife I love her all the time. That's, we never don't say, you know. And, and he said, we just said it really fast. Like, I'm not that important. <laughs> Take some time and say I love you to your wife. And he literally was like, call her back. I was like, no, man, she knows. And he's like, call her back. I'm like, fine. <laughs> like, gee, many Christmas. So now every time I'm around him, if my wife calls, I like, you know, I'll answer the phone 
uh, hey, gorgeous, or hey, beautiful, <laughs> and, and I love you so much. And it's kind of a joke. But the funny thing is, I hear you answer your phone when your wife calls, and you normally say, hey, beauty, or something like that. Is there a... Um, is there a life lesson in that? Cause you know, two separate kind of people in my life have said, you know, one said slow down. And then I see you just taking that time to say that, go that extra mile. It's just not, Hey, Hey beauty. <laughs> well, she'll be happy that that got publicized. I don't know, but uh, yeah, that's my uh, nickname for her. She's the most beautiful woman that I know. Um, and um, I think as husbands, we um, can all do a better job of letting our wives um, know how much we appreciate them. Um, I think uh, sometimes we do get a little bit uh, busy. And so it's uh, love you. I got to go by um, yeah. kind of thing. And, but the other thing I see a lot of times we use that word and we talked about it in the last segment, you know, we use that word love. Um, sometimes we say it almost out of uh, a routine yeah. or, or a habit. Um, love you. Bye. And uh, I was just watching a, uh, I, I was watching a movie. I'm trying to remember uh, the name of the movie right now, but the uh, Courageous, um, if you haven't watched that, you yeah. can watch the Courageous, yeah. but the, the one uh, police officer, he was talking to his wife, put her on hold, um, and then was talking to the, his captain, and then, <laughs> and then he yeah. said, love you, bye, to the, to the police captain, and he's, oh, you know, and sometimes we just say those words and don't really um, put thought into yeah. what it is that we're saying. And so um, I, I do think that uh, when it comes to our wives, we need to be very intentional, which by the way, is my favorite word in the English language. Intentional. Um, intentional. It's, at least it's in the top five. Um, <laughs> intentional. Um, it's so many of the things that we do in our lives and in our relationships is uh, in this, uh, we go in this default mode, you know, we just get up and we go through the motions throughout the day and we throw out and I love you here or there, but it's, uh, when you look, when you look her in the eyes and even when you're on the telephone with her, picturing her right there, look her in the eyes and tell her that you love her. I mean, and that's, um, you have to slow down sometimes so that it is not a, um, it's not a habit. It shouldn't be a habit. Yeah. Um, it, it should be an intentional act of um, showing, and don't just say the words either. Obviously, you spend time uh, letting her know that beyond uh, beyond the words. Um, so some people just get caught up. Well, I told her I loved her, and so she knows, but you haven't helped her with any of the chores around the house oh, whoa, for the last down. no not slow you down. not you not you <laughs> not you i'm just calling you out <laughs> she doesn't watch this oh, <laughs> but yeah. but i'm sure that you help with the kids and you do some you do your share around the house and if you didn't uh savannah you make sure that he's doing his share of stuff around the house and <laughs> so um you know we take some turns yeah. around here uh um, because it's not just about the words uh you know love is an action uh, love yeah. isn't just an emotion. And so when you say it fast to your wife, uh, sometimes it can just be the words. So make sure that it's words followed up with action, I guess. Uh, so hats off to your friend for catching you and busting you out yeah. on that. Yeah. And it was funny. I was actually talking to my wife on the phone today and uh, she asked, she's like, that's, why do you do that? Why'd you do that? You know, is that a, was it a joke? I said, no, it's not a, I mean, it's kind of a little bit, you know, cause when I, now when I'm around him, I just, I'm like, I love you so much. Beautiful. You're the, like, you know, and, but you know, it is funny. She did notice it, you know? And um, yeah, I think that uh, it's funny because I do say, I say, love you a lot. Like mm -hmm. my family growing up, even if my mom, let's say my mom and I were really mad at each other and I was going off to bed, even if it was like, I love you night. <laughs> and we still like, it just, I just grew up, like never go to bed without saying, I love you. Right. And so, um, you know, that was something that my wife, I don't think really grew up with, you know, because a lot of people, I just don't think a lot of people, you know, say that, you know, it's a lot. Right. I've, I've, I, I know I have a couple in my, in my head, that I'm close with that I almost never hear the husband say, even say, I love you when they're leaving or on the phone. It's just like, okay, all right, bye. And they I'm like, like shocks me. I'm like, what? Like, right. You know what? You, you can't do that. You can't not say, I love you. 
Well, it, it depends on the love language that you're the mm -hmm. arrangement with your spouse. And, yeah. um, you know, if your spouse, um, I don't want to say is okay with it because that's not something they should just be okay with. Yeah. But if that's the way that they, that works for them, that's one thing. I would just suggest that as a husband, we make sure that it's not just something that works for them because uh, she's just gotten used to it. Um, but that that's really uh, her preference to not yeah. hear that. Um, but I also, I know so many people who say the words, but they don't follow it up with anything um, that resembles that, yeah. uh, that love. And uh, I also know it, it's interesting to me about how many guys don't even like to say that word. They feel, yeah. I don't know if they feel like it's a, a feminine thing or if it's uh, just not macho enough or whatever. But um, as long as we've known each other, you've probably heard me tell you, I love you yeah. um, multiple yeah. times because, and I'm comfortable with that um, because there's a lot of people in the world um, that have never heard that they're loved. Yeah. And if you're around me, I mean, that's my mission in life is to love the person in front of me. Yeah. And the, my mission is to um, cause everybody that I come into contact with to know that they make a difference, that they matter yeah. and uh, that they are loved, that they are appreciated. And you have to use words. You can't just do actions. You have to also say it. Yeah. It's, it's funny you're saying that it brings back this uh, memory from like when I was in high school um, cause I've always said, I love you to my fam, like my parents, my sister, like, like I always say, I love you to them, but I was with a friend of mine, um, and his mother was driving us around and his sister was dating a guy that was kind of maybe a little bit abusive and, uh -huh. and the mother, now listen, this family, obviously I can't say their name, but right. this family, like if I get in a fight. I want them on my side. Like they're one of the first phone calls I'm making because they're a big scrappers. family, big scrappers, a big military family. Like they're, uh, yeah. Stick up for the people that they care about. Oh yes. And, uh, the mother was on the phone with her daughter's boyfriend and she was tearing this guy a new one. I mean, she was cussing and, and I mean, she was telling him she was going to whip his, you know what? And <laughs> I mean, just going on and I'm in the back seat and, you know, it was entertaining. We were going through a drive through too. She's like, on just a second and she orders food i'm gonna you know oh man and she we were pulling up to the window and she goes i'm busy i'll talk to you about this later love you bye <laughs> and i was like like the conversation her yelling and cussing at him and saying she was gonna you know whip his what and like that wasn't a big deal but when she's like love you bye i was just jolted right and also she's she would be able to go from that to like oh yeah how are you guys like she was very you know so <laughs> i remember i was like i asked her like did, what was the last thing you said to him? And she was like, love you. Bye. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I heard that. <laughs> you were just telling me, like he, you know, you guys have some issues with each other. Why did you say love you? Bye. I was so, and she goes, well, listen, she goes, I'm really upset with him right now. But ultimately if he were to die before the next time I see him, I would at least want him to know that I do, you know, right. she's like, I'm mad at him. I, you know, she goes, and I could beat the crap out of him right now. But she was, I just think that, you know, she, and they do everyone. So they tell everyone they love, you know, love you, bye. Yeah. And so me and my buddy, like, and so that's, I think, kind of how it started with me saying love you. Because I mean, I, I, you know, love you, man. I say love you a lot to people I care mm -hmm. about. But it was just that. I just remember just thinking that was just the funniest thing. And I come from a family who says it a lot. Right. But when she's like, and I'm going to kick your butt next time I see you. And you better be ready to explain yourself. All right. I got to go. Love you, bye. <laughs> what the heck um but you know that's that's great because um we we actually live in this this society now that if if i'm mad at you then we're done yeah and we can't be friends we can't hang out we can't fellowship anything along those lines because you did something wrong but if that's yeah. the standard we're using i would have no friends yeah. you know i've done a lot of people wrong um and uh, hopefully I've made amends to everybody and uh, people recognize that I, I learned from my mistakes and they've made their fair share yeah. of mistakes and things like that. And if we, we just write off people when they don't say the thing that we wanted them to, or they, they do something that uh, offends us. Uh, we have a bunch of people that are thin skinned that are walking yeah. around offended all the time. And it starts here in our own homes and in our own um, small communities that uh, 
you know, if, if my friends get offended at me, I want to have a good enough friendship that they can say, Hey, you know, that thing you did, you know, it really bothers me. Yeah. So we can talk it out. And, and I believe that uh, most of the people that I hang out with were mature enough that it's not going to be, well, if you don't like it too bad, Yeah. you know, and yeah. it, it has to be, um, we live in this uh, very shallow um, idea of relationship mm -hmm. as a society. Um, it's everything is so surface, so shallow, and I'm so sick of that. Um, which is one of the reasons I wanted to do this because we can have real conversations about real things um, and maybe even show some people how to do that. Yeah. Um, it, it, we don't understand what it means to like dig roots in. Yeah. Um, we think of people as disposable. Our friendships are disposable. Well, if you don't like it, I won't see you again. Yeah. And um, that's a, that's a sad state of affairs. We need to, um, really let people know that even like, like the lady you said, um, even though I might be upset with you right now, um, I'm going to get over it. You're going to do better. Yeah. Um, and we can come back in a lot of times. What I've found is that when you are, maybe you have an, a disagreement or you've had a really serious argument or something with somebody that if you can stick to it, yeah. Uh, and I'm going to tell you, you know, for you and Savannah, those think about back to, um, you've been married how long? Oh my oh, goodness. Do I have to edit this? Yeah, I have to I'm going to have to edit, edit this. Uh, we, we've been married eight years okay. coming up, coming up on eight years. How long have you been together? That's what it threw him. Cause he was, yeah, he was didn't thinking, know what answer yeah, he was 12. supposed to give. Yeah. So he knew 12 right 12 off the years. bat. So they've yeah. been together 12 years. And in 12 years, you've probably had some serious yeah. arguments. Um, but once you have that argument and you come to a resolution to the argument, um, if you do it right, you actually come out stronger. Yeah. Um, what I've seen a lot of people is where they kind of reconcile, and I use quotations, they reconcile, where they just kind of, well, I guess that's the way it is. And they might be moving forward, but they didn't really have that uh, true um, reconnection. Yeah. But when they those who do really reconnect, they do come out stronger. If you're not coming out stronger, you're chipping away, coming out in, in your, uh, at one point, you're gonna end up with a relationship that the next, the next offense is gonna be the one that you know, causes everything to end, Yeah. right? But when you are intentional about um, making things right, uh, when you can love the person in front of you, even when they are um, kind of being a stinker, or even if they've done something wrong, um, you can come out of that and have a stronger friendship, a stronger yeah. marriage, those kinds of things. I mean, we don't yeah. throw away our kids when they get, mm, would we get mad at them, right? Oh, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> right, no, right, right. We, yeah. we don't. Yeah. Um, so, um, but we tend to want to do that with people sometimes. Yeah. Because I think, you know, most of the time, if there's a, a an argument or dispute, a lot of times it, it comes down to throwing away our own pride because even if the other person is in the wrong, mm -hmm. I think for the most part, any, it takes two to tango. That's right. Right. At some point, you know, in an argument, so, well, maybe I did this, but you did this. And we don't want to concede that, you know, that high, that moral high ground right. of, well, maybe I did, but that doesn't matter. You know, you offended me. Right. And so, you know, I think that's one of the things with any time I've been in a, you know, my wife and I've had um, intense fellowship, we'll call it that heated discussion. Um, most of the time, even if she is wrong, which is rare, um, a lot of times there's at least something that I, you know, that I have to change too. And, and so I think that's a, a really good, you know, a good point of just, you know, stick through it, stick through those conversations, put away your pride and ego and uh, yeah, deeper relationships form and deeper relationships, I think should be our goal, right? I yeah, think absolutely. that's the, the most fulfilled you'll be is when you have a deep relationship with someone and you can share your life together. So I really think that's good. Yeah. Thanks for the advice, old timer. Mm, okay, whippersnapper. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this, this what do we call this segment? Percolating. All right. So that's percolating. That's our thoughts on uh, some of those relational issues. Um, we're going to take a break and uh, we'll be right back. All right. Welcome back. Welcome back. And what are you doing? 
What are you doing? I'm just looking at our little, so you're not, little thing. You're not allowing like tech to get in the way of what we're doing here. You're using it the way it was intended, yeah. which is to be an asset. Yes. Yes. How many times have you had that conversation? Like you're talking to somebody and then they pick up their phone and they're just like, and you're wondering yeah. if they even listened to you. Yeah. How many times have I been on the other side oh, of that you're the one doing that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Three times this week. Three just times. So, no, I'm just kidding. In the past 12 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's, it, it becomes so addictive, you know, well, that's, they were not stupid when they came up with these smartphones. They made them, and my understanding, I'm not a scientific uh, guy at all, but my understanding is, is they patterned these things, the, these uh, smartphones, um, off of like the same psychological stuff they use in casinos. Um, uh, yeah. The, the lights, the sounds, uh, the instant win, you touch something and yeah. something happens. Um, and so they, they are, we have an addicted society. Yeah. Uh, that's not what you were doing, but I would no. bust you out if we were having yeah. like a show here <laughs> and you were like Facebooking. texting your yeah. friends, Hey selfie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So what's this agenda? S yes. So so we've already done the grind. The grind, right? We've already done some percolating. We've done some percolating. It's a great segment, by the way. I, th I think so too. I really liked it. Um, and then before we do the end, then yes, I want to invite our um, audience. Uh, if you've got thoughts about anything that we're talking about, um, I would love for you to email those uh, thoughts to us or put them in the comments. That's probably better. Yeah. Put your put your thoughts in the comments below this video. Um, and tell us what you think about uh, anything we're talking, whether it's about the coffee, about society, about um, telling your wife you love her, um, those kinds of things. Yeah. And if there's anything you want us to talk about, f feel free to put those in the comments as well. Yeah, yeah. So we great. did the grind, we did percolating, Percol and now... And now, much like the coffee we're drinking today, yes. light roast. Light roast. I thought that it would be really cool to have this segment... And this would just be a brief, fun conversation about something funny, maybe a joke or a funny story, nothing deep. Honestly, probably some mindless content where you can listen and kind of laugh and then, you know, move on with your day. Do you have my, anything light? My friend Owen, um, and Owen, I think he's like 10. Uh, his dad, uh, his dad is Toby, his mom, Nicole. Hey, Toby and Nicole. Um, so we went, we had a men's breakfast this past weekend and Owen had a joke and he apparently just thought up on his own. Okay. When vegans, <laughs> sorry, funny. <laughs> when vegans have an argument. Yeah. Do they have a beef or do they have a plant-based dispute? <laughs> That's a good one. I thought that was He's 10, good. huh? He's about 10. That's yeah. a good one. I told him to write it I'm, down. I'm stealing that from a 10 year old, and I go. am going to claim it as Give my him credit. Own. No, no got to give, give him credit. Owen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, I used to do comedy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. right. I used to do stand up. Um, I did that for about uh, three years, and uh, I did not. Uh, uh, do well. I I wasn't like hitting the big circuit. I wasn't hitting the big time, but I really did enjoy the um, the process of yeah. of writing, uh, testing material out. But the fellowship with all of the other comedians that yeah. I was hanging out with was uh, amazing. I met you know, some really cool people. I've I've a couple of the comedians that I like to listen to have told stories. I've heard them on podcasts telling stories about them and a lot of these other big comedians. Like they all come up around the same time. And then, you know, they all kind of hit it. A lot of them hit it big together. Right. You know, and I'm like, oh, that's kind of, you wouldn't think about that. Like, you know, I mean, um, like David Spade and Adam Sandler, and like they were all in the kind of um, stand up kind of circuit together. And now, right. you know, Adam Sandler makes a movie and they all make a couple million bucks from it. So, right. um, yeah, I like I like that joke. That's a good one. Yeah, I have a light roast thing. Okay, we talked about it like we talked about it together last week, but I did it again on the way here okay. today. So one of the things that brings me the most joy in the entire world, and I just don't know why I'm immature. It's why I don't know why you're immature either. <laughs> I don't. Know. I'm 27. Yeah, it'll come with age. Uh, really? I maybe. <laughs> uh, I love when I drive past a golf course oh. or a driving range. Yes. And people are out there and they're mid swing or they're getting ready to swing and to either roll down my window and yell for the entire time or to just lay on the horn. Yeah. And it, 
I, you know, I've been a happier person here the past several months. My son, uh, where his preschool is, every time I'm on, on the way there or back, we go past this driving range, not far from the road. So every time I just lay on the horn and sometimes I get some really angry golfers, you know, they're they working their game. And I'm yeah. like, nope, you're not working. That's a bad swing. I don't know. I, I, I have mixed feelings about this. I will tell you this. When <laughs> I was in my 20s, I did the same thing. <laughs> but then, then I remembered what it was like to invest my time, effort, and energy into something and then have somebody come right by and just minimize it. And uh, so I didn't find the humor later on in life. So if you have any golfers out there, I'd love to hear what you think, but direct all hate mail to Jesse. That'd be Jesse, I'll take not it. Dwayne. I'll take it, and I'm just going to keep on doing it. I'm going to pick up my son after this, and guess what I'm going to do? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, that, so, now, uh, I would love to know your thoughts on this, and how many of you do the honk when you pass the driving yeah. range? So, How but, many of you are going to start doing the honk? past the driving range that's uh, the question yes we're not putting our addresses publicly though i can just <laughs> see a line of golfers coming past your house yeah. and savannah's wondering why at two o'clock in the morning everybody's honking <laughs> it past your house uh so i i am not a golfer um the last time that i went golfing was a fiasco um so i had gone with my brother a couple of nephews and we're standing, uh, the tee is on this hill. And there's this valley that goes uh, down, uh, down the, uh, what you, the greens, or whatever. And uh, I'm hitting the ball like I'm, I have no form. Yeah. Zero form. And, but I whack that ball with all my bite. And it's just this little bloop. And the rest of us, same thing. We hit it, whack, and bloop. And so we're down in this valley. And there are, there's this cart of blue-haired old ladies. Um, who holler down at us while we're in the valley and ask, hey, can we play through? And we're like, sure. So they line up and this ball just sail. Like, and they're like 80 years old and we were just hanging our head in shame. So they take their cart and at least we had that on. We could walk, right? We didn't have to take the cart, but they uh, drove down and they, they veered off of their path and they came over towards where we were at and they took a handful of golf balls and said, here, you're going to need these. And they threw them at us, sped off in their golf cart and you could hear them cackling. Ah! Like it was the funniest thing ever. You know what you should have done? I've never gone golfing again. You know what you should have done? What's that? You should have found a horn. And when they were going to swing the next time, <laughs> right. get right back at them. This is light roast. Yep. <laughs> we'll see in a few minutes. Welcome back uh, to Coffee with Dwayne and Jesse. Um, this is going to be our last segment of the day. We call it Cream and Sugar. Cream and Sugar. Um, with everything going on in the world today, there's a lot of, you know, if you watch the news on either side of the aisle, it all seems like doom and gloom and it's all controversy and it's all, you know, really inflammatory. And so we wanted to give some good news. That's right. Um, we, we actually, to... we were going to have a segment called uh, Dark Roast. Yes. Um, but we thought, why bring everybody up? You know, caffeine is a uplifter. Um, and then hit them with some dark news. Mm. Um, I think there's enough out there. Yeah. yeah so we're going to do cream and sugar, which yes. sounds uh, pleasant, again, like dessert. Um, so what do you have for us today? So this one's also kind of a little bit funny, but it's good, it's good news. Um, so <laughs> the title of the article is Boy Hero Saves Sister from Choking After Watching John Cena. Um, so this little boy, uh, <laughs> was, he was eight years old. He realized that his 20-month-old sister was choking on a chicken nugget, but he didn't panic. Instead, he calmly directed his dad to pull over the car they were driving and proceeded to dislodge the obstruction from his sister's airway. He said that he learned the life-saving technique from watching WWE superstar John Cena perform the maneuver on an episode of the Nickelodeon show The Substitutes. Wow. So the father said that he could not hear the daughter choking. He was driving, 
and um well you don't hear choking yeah you don't hear it because there's yeah. nothing come nothing happening so so you know watching wrestling and watching you know it ended up being a good thing you know so i thought what you were gonna say is he saw john cena's baby pick somebody up and, and slam yeah, them down that's and what that I, dislodged yeah. but he did like a heimlich or something yeah yeah so that's that's what i thought too when i read it i was like that is a great application of but then john cena uh congratulated the the kid and sent him a video, um, you know, basically saying, hey, great job. Uh, so that's kind of cool, you know, to be an eight-year-old kid and to learn something from a, a TV show and to do it and then to have, you know, this, this yeah. guy, this John Cena. So I just sure. thought that was cool. Where'd you find that? This is on, it's a website called The Good News Network. Shout out to The Good News yeah. Network. And yeah. John Cena and this eight-year-old boy, what's his yeah. name? His boy, his his boy, his <laughs> name is Jackson Dempsey. Jackson Dempsey, yep. good job, and good he save, He saved man. his little sister Leela's life. In some countries, that means then that you have to look out for her for the rest of your life. So be looking out for your sister. Don't quit now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that's right. good. That's some good news. Very that's some cool. cream, and sugar. cream and sugar right there. Hey, do you all have some cream and sugar you'd like to share with us? Drop it in the comments, uh, send us a message, and uh, uh, we would love to hear from you. Uh, that'll be the end of our show. By the way, we each have written a book, and uh, there's links in the description below. Um, and if you want to check those out, uh, get a little bit more about who we are, what we yeah. are about. Again, coffee is a hobby for us. Um, we also sell this coffee uh, on our uh, website. Yep. I do like my uh, So please check it out. Uh, we appreciate you tuning in and uh, thanks for watching. Yeah. All right. Coffee with Dwayne and Jesse. I'm Dwayne. I'm Jesse. Be well. Do good. And drink, drink good, good coffee. coffee.